All right, welcome back to Chaotically Intolerant, episode 142. We have two, possibly two camera views of Layton today. Um, for those Chaotically Intolerant Plus subscribers, you get the extra Layton camera. Um, it's it's kind of like, uh, son of a bitch. It's <laughs> your camera. <laughs> Dude, yeah. Once the recording started, my browser just went berserk. So let's just we're ju we're just gonna go with the phone view on this one. Yeah. Um, you get a new angle of Layton. Wait, we, we need to get the back shot of Layton as well. <laughs> just get back shots the of Layton. three sixty. This three six. Just have a whole camera. I no. I I need I need to get a I need to get a camera of Layton taking back shots. That's just what. <laughs> what the bro? I'm not Tom Holland. Uh, speaking of Tom Holland, we have something related to him on the wheel today, so hopefully we land on that. Um, but a little housekeeping before. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, content updates, I guess. Uh, let me think. So Thursday, well, Late in Mondays, that's that's the new Monday episode. It's just Late in Mondays. Um, that's what we call him because Leighton gets his Monday appearances. And then uh, Thursday, I think we're back with michael but we're going to be transitioning back into baseball so um but obviously we still talk talk about latent stuff on mondays and then uh big big announcement we've officially been approved from the government to uh proceed with chaotically intolerant llc so Dang. we are uh, officially established so yeah i don't know what we're going to do with that but um if your company wants to sponsor the chaotically intolerant table tennis league Go ahead and just reach out anyway. We'll take your money. 500, 1,000, 5,000, 10,000, 15, whatever. Just give us money. That's all I want. Right, Layton? Mm -hmm. Yeah, make our dreams come true. <laughs> or make a wish, kids. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right, let's give the wheel a spin, huh? How about it? Oh, boy. What do we got first? Layton, name a man. Name a man. David Hasselhoff. Uh, SpongeBob legend. He saved SpongeBob. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right? Absolute legend. That's the only thing I really remember. Or Click, if you've ever seen Click. Um, David Hasselhoff, goat in Click. Actually, he was an asshole, but he was the goat. Um, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start it off with, with Shane Gillis. Congrats to Shane Gillis on his SNL appearance last night. Some people said he was uncomfortable. I thought that's his bit. Like, isn't that kind of his bit? His whole thing is being a little uncomfortable. I suppose I didn't watch it, but I heard that he was controversial. He said, uh, said "quote." He he said, "and I quote retarded on mm -hmm. SNL," which is a. I mean, I would say that's a pretty big deal. I didn't really think he was very controversial. He talked about the Trump shoes, which we can talk about the Trump shoes as well. Hilarious. That is pretty silly. <laughs> Gotta get the drip. <laughs> Him going to sneaker con is just hilarious to me that that he would even show up. <laughs> mm -hmm. Somebody on Fox News was talking about it. They were like, "This is a great, this is a great thing for him to connect with black voters of America." I was like, "Whoa!" Actually, <laughs> yeah, they they actually said that on Fox News. <laughs> I was like, "That's insane." I was like, "That is that is crazy." <laughs> like that is. So I guess I guess we can break the news on this show. Only black people like shoes. That's <laughs> that's you just heard breaking it here first. news. White people don't wear shoes. Asian people don't wear shoes, according to Fox News. Only black people like shoes. You I've never under first. I've never understood like shoe culture. I get one pair of shoes a year, and it's like <laughs> sixty bucks, and then I'm all good. I don't, I don't really get, I mean, I guess it's like collecting whatever, you know, you collect things. I've seen people collect waffle makers. It's a little weird yeah. to me, but it's like a collection. I have, a, I have a few pairs of shoes. I, I like to, I'm I'm not like those people that are putting my life savings into a pair of shoes, mm -hmm. but I have a few pairs of Jordans. I like to, I like to style myself up a little bit, you know, my, re you know, clearly I'm, I'm very stylish. I'm a very stylish guy, but, mm -hmm. uh. Saying saying using those shoes to collect, connect with the black voter is insane. <laughs> yeah, that is wild. <laughs> that is insane. Um, but Shane, I, I think Shane did great. He did he did that Trump impression. He did um, a, a fake gambling ad for betting on your friend 
to ruin his life with gambling. Like, what is he going to do next, basically? Mm -hmm. Uh, Pretty sick. Pretty awesome. Um, And then they did another one with Forrest Gump where he goes to, like, his high school reunion. And that was pretty cool. So, um, and then he talked about his dad being a volunteer girls high school basketball coach, which... (laughs) It's hilarious. His dad looks like a, a girls basketball coach, like exactly the typical stereotype for that. So, but I didn't think, I don't know. I didn't think it was very, he wasn't controversial at all. Good if for you him. Think he's, yeah. I mean, if you think he's not funny, that's one thing, but I didn't think he was controversial. He does look like he has Down syndrome as well. Like he, he resembles, he does Speaking resemble. controversial, him. Alex taking a shot out here. That's what he said. He said that on SNL. He was like, I have I have siblings with Down syndrome, so you know, or uh, family members with Down syndrome, so you know where I get it from. That was basically what he said. Thanks. <laughs> Not even controversial. I, I was I was quoting, so um I don't know. I mean it wasn't it wasn't like I didn't feel like it was like groundbreaking either. Like it was just kinda cool. Like he he did the thing. Mm-hmm. That's all it really should be. Um, okay, next thing on the list. All right. Uh, oh, NASA. NASA has a Mars simulator. They are looking to pay people, four people, to do a year-long mission in a Mars simulator. 3D printed, 1,700 square foot facility in Houston. I wonder what the pay is. I'm curious what the pay is. It says details about pay will be discussed during the screening process. So I'm going to assume... They are going to uh, way underpay. Did it say a year long? One year. Interesting. What's your number? I mean, what I think they will pay versus what they could get away with paying are very, very what, different. No, what would you take? <laughs> you what would as, I take? If, if you're in, at the negotiating table, you're sitting there, you're like, listen, NASA, I, I want this number. That's what I want. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I like my current job, so it would have to be more than that, plus the amount of life I would miss out on over that year. I'd probably, ha- it'd have to be over six figures. Like, I would think, like, uh, lowest that I would really consider would be, like, 125000 Plus, it's the government. I feel like... I'm going to, I'm going to get my money. Yeah, they can just print more, like, big (laughs) wolf. They already did that. (laughs) Uh, It says, um, to qualify, applicants must be U.S. citizens. We're good. Easy. Be between 30 and 55 years old. Well, we're eliminated already. Fuck, man. I was really thinking about it. I was, I was getting ready. Um, Non-smokers and speak English proficiently. The agency is primarily looking for those with experience in science, technology, engineering, or mathematics. So if you did the STEM program in high school, mm-hmm. you're good. You're <laughs> you're ready to go. Born too late to buy a house. Born too early to simulate Mars, man. I wish I wish I had the time machine to go back to eight year old me and just tell me tell myself to invest in in all that cheap property. Mm-hmm. What the fuck am I doing? going going to summer camp why am i not working why am i not why am i not buying cheap real estate right even like realistically just like tell my my eight-year-old self hey that five dollars in chore money make mom put it towards amazon stock or just like would, something I, like I, that that'd be crazy i would tell myself when i turned 18 to buy dogecoin because i thought about buying it and then that was exactly that when it fair. shot up and then immediately sell. I'm, I don't care about the pump and dump. People think it's scummy to do pump and dump. Fuck you, man. It's, crypt, it's cryptocurrency. Mm, like, it's literally. not real. <laughs> none, none of it's real. <laughs> I'm not an investor. I'm a gambler. Yeah, that's exactly that's exactly what I am. I will, I'm always, I'm one bet away from changing my life. You're mm-hmm. always one bet away from winning your biggest bet. So just go for it. <laughs> um... Didn't I tell you about the Super Bowl? I don't. I told you which... about the Chiefs. I, I told you that they were going to win, and I oh, told you yeah. to put all the money on the Chiefs. I don't think I don't think we got to talk about post Super Bowl yet. Did you, you put on any money Super. on the Chiefs? I put about I put nine of my ten Super Bowl bets were on the Chiefs. Did they all I win? Won, I won eight of them. Dang. 
Come on, throw some, throw, throw some figures out. No unit shaming. You can't unit shame me because I'm poor. <laughs> uh, five, like five bucks of it. It's nothing. Dang. So I, the only like... ones I lost, I lost Rashid Rice MVP and Debo Samuel MVP. Those are the only two I lost. Everything else was like Patrick Mahomes over two or over one and a half touchdown passes. I want to say I had like a bunch of, of um, parlays on like Chiefs, whatever, like two and a half Chiefs X Y Z. It was all mm-hmm. Chiefs. I told everyone all Chiefs, and no one listened. Yeah, well, they said it's I was like crazy going into that. I a big part of me felt that the Chiefs were gonna win, but it's like I didn't want them to win. So obviously, I'm gonna be like, okay, I'm a 49ers yeah. fan this week. Blah blah blah. Shut up! I don't want to talk to you. Blah blah blah. The amount of 40 whiners out there complaining about the script. It's scripted. It's script. Shut the fuck up, bro. You guys are just, you guys choke. They choke. Yeah. Layton, you're, I, you're currently a 49ers fan. You're chokers. You guys are chokers. Now I'm back to the Eagles. I'm back to the Eagles. Uh, Big Dom, by the way. Big Dom. Uh, apparently he was Nick Sirianni's babysitter. His, like, emotional support animal. They said as soon as Big Dom got removed from the sidelines, he uh, Nick Sirianni was getting into fights with players. Now, Layton, what are your thoughts on Big Dom clearly being the most important part of the Philadelphia Eagles? And who's you got- Big Dom? You don't know Big Dom? You're an Eagles fan. Understand. You don't know who Big Dom is? No. Big Dom is your. I'm life-saver. an Eagles fan, by the way, bro. He's your Pookie Bear. He's your lifesaver. He does everything for you. Who is, is he? Just some dude. He's he's a security guard that like sits on the Eagles sideline, and he got into a fight with Dre Greenlaw during the Eagles Forty Nine ers regular season game. So then he got says he got like kicked off the sideline for the regular season. Dang, that's it. He's just a big Italian guy. That's all he is. He's Tony Soprano, just from Philly. So Darn. what what are your thoughts that Nick Sirianni needs an emotional support security guard? Uh, we've all been there. Uh, get him a new one. Bring justice for Big Dom. Does Big Dom need an emotional support security guard? Yeah, but it's one huge circle. Where does, Big Dom does is the... Nick Sirianni's, <laughs> Jalen Hurts is Big Dom's, you know, and then Dallas Goddard is Jalen Hurts. Jason Kelsey is everyone's. I'm I'm almost worried about the emotional support security guard for Big Dom. Does that one also need an emotional support security guard? Do mm-hmm. do they just need to keep hiring emo- until the entire city of Philadelphia is hired as some sort of emotional support security guard? And then and then they have to sell tickets just to just to the emotional support security guards. So then the entire stadium is filled with Philadelphia emotional support security guards. Well, it's the only way to keep uh, trash from throwing, being thrown on the field. <laughs> Wait, your your audio is going through on your computer. Hold on. Talk again. Whoa. Yeah, it is. Okay. I'm, I'm just going to mute your... Wait. No, you're good. You're good. You're good. You're good. This is going to be a weird episode to edit. I'll say that. Yeah, this is this is going to be a really weird episode to edit. Yeah, keep the audio on your phone and mute the computer. Okay, how do I mute? I think I can... You I can't mute you? while... Okay, I that works. You. I muted you. Um, okay, so... Layton gives 100, 100... How much for the NASA thing? How much did you say? Uh, 125000 is what I would probably need to consider it. I mean, if it wasn't a government organization, I would probably say a little less. But if we're paying our... You, also get, paying, you won't have any contact with your family or, or like, besides, like... Yeah, that's what... It, like, uh, I, I would assume you would get, like, you can do... Like, if you watched, what's it called? The Martian? You can do, like, video calls and stuff. But you're not, you're not going to yeah. be actually speaking with your family Mm -hmm. i would say if a politician is getting what one hundred and seventy five thousand dollars a year to do nothing then (laughs) i would say yes or no yeah that's all they gotta do like and they don't even vote yes or no they send a proxy sometimes anyways let's see how much are they oh here we go salary u.s politician's salary so 
Bro, I'm sure they could just get like a homeless person who'd do it for free <laughs> just to have the housing and food for a year. That would that's a great idea. That is actually a great idea. Leighton, you're solving the homeless crisis right now. Literally, just put them all in give Mars them, simulators. Give them, give them sixty thousand dollars. I'm not even kidding. Give him sixty k. He gets fed for a year. You can give him, I don't know, like med. I'm assuming he's gonna get medical care as well. Like, mm-hmm. that's there. You go. Leighton has solved the homeless crisis. I'm looking right now. It says for the house pre. This is insanity. Congressional salaries two hundred forty six thousand dollars. Dang. That's crazy. I feel like mm-hmm. I feel like you should have to make what the average American makes if you're in the House of Representatives, because that's who you're. That's who you're. Anyway, we're not getting into that. Um, <laughs> I'll take double if you can pay a House of Representatives person just to vote yes or no two hundred forty six thousand dollars. I'll take double. Fuck it. So I mean, however yeah, much, if if you offer me five hundred thousand, like. Don't even need to say bye to Dakota. Hey, BRB. Like, I think I would I'm probably there. go in and I would start at a million. I would be like, I want $1 million. Yeah, and they would be that. like, no, we're going to give you 50. And I'm like, fuck no. You're not giving me 50. Um, this year and needs probably, to be life-changing. Yeah, it, it's got to be life-changing. Like, Because especially, can you imagine having to spend one year with like four other people and nobody else? That's got to be mentally. Yeah, taxing I, well. I need a million dollars, and I can pick my roommates, <laughs> my Mars mates. Yeah, that that's like the uh, what was like the World War. II, they had something for like World War Two. You can register as friends to go into the army, and then you'll be kept in the same <laughs> platoon. That's crazy. That's what I would do. I would just be like, "You guys have to let my friends come." Mm-hmm. And they'll be like, "That maybe." I mean, they would probably just say no because we have probably thousands of other applicants, but. Mm-hmm. doesn't hurt to ask doesn't hurt to ask all right um let's do another one Grizabella, bro you can hear her meow interrupting she's just interrupting no oh we gotta spin it again she's just looking into her litter box meowing at it. dude it landed on the exact same thing it's a blank spot don't land on the same thing please there we go okay johnny manzel uh lost about 40 pounds just doing a strict diet of cocaine. So, Leighton. New weight loss trick. I need it. You're, I, I understand you were on a diet for a while. You I said no am. more, you said no more Coke. No more Coca-Cola. Maybe that's that? the, I'm pretty sure oh, you said you're cutting do down on your that. sugar intake. Your Coke no, intake. No, cutting my calorie and liquid calories get me so much. But now I'm actually intermittent fasting now. <laughs> Why aren't you adding cocaine to your intermittent fasting routine? Well, I didn't. I didn't, I didn't know it was so helpful, but now I'm informed. So the the cocaine, I don't know how you're gonna get it, but mm-hmm. I think that's a necessary thing. We we gotta get any any cocaine. Any people who have cocaine, please contact us. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, we would love to buy. Your biggest cocaine. Yes. <laughs> one cocaine, please. I think you need more than one. I, <laughs> I want to say you would probably get like five or six. Five five to six cocaines. If you have five to six cocaines, please contact yes. us. Um, Leighton, do I have permission to put out your phone number for drug dealers to contact with cocaine? Uh, nah, they can use my chaotically intolerant email. Uh, yeah, Leighton at chaoticallyintolerant.com. <laughs> Open, open or to cocaine options. Open to five to six cocaines, please. Mm-hmm. Um, send him your quotes. Let's get a get a, what what's it called? Like when you, but we're looking for a quote on five to six cocaines. Yeah, next um, day shipping. I think, but I think Johnny Manziel going on a diet of cocaine to lose forty pounds is the least surprising headline I've ever heard. Like, if you remember Johnny Man, if you were, I don't know, Leighton, if you remember. I don't know if you were a college football fan back then, but when Johnny Manziel, Johnny football, like the peak of that is being studied currently as just the highest peak anyone was ever at, I want to say. Mm-hmm. His his literal saying was, win or lose, we ball. Or <laughs> maybe, no, that's not what it was. It was, win or lose, we still party, I want to say. Let's see. Wait. I got to find Oh, win or lose, we boobs. That was it. That was it. Um... 
Leighton, that fits perfectly for you. I think I think you are you're gonna be Johnny Manziel very soon. I'll take it. Just without the football. Without without playing the high level of college football. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll play I'll play left out. I will say I think that Cleveland Browns team would have won the same amount of games with you at quarterback as with Johnny Manziel at quarterback. <sighs> Oh shucks! <laughs> in the NFL, you probably—I will say—you have studied the same amount of film that Johnny Manziel studied in the NFL, right now, because he he studied zero zero hours of film mm-hmm. in the NFL. Yeah, I, don't, I only study uh, missed holdings calls on the Chiefs. <laughs> oh sure, okay, yep. <laughs> the script said so. Let me hold on. Let me let me pull out my my list of. So you're studying that Joe Biden has enlisted Taylor Swift and Roger Goodell to rig the Chiefs. Mm-hmm. Let me make sure that's right. Let me check the rest of my notes. Yes, rig the Chiefs mm-hmm. um, to win the Super Bowl. So To distract the masses. <laughs> no, 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 no. Not to distract the masses. My notes here say so they can win the Super Bowl to... And that's why Travis Kelsey also is in the Pfizer commercial. So... Um, more people will get the COVID vaccine. <laughs> yes, there is a direct correlation between Taylor Swift, Travis Kelsey, the Super Bowl, and the coronavirus vaccine. That's mm-hmm. that's what my notes say. You can see it right here. There's all of them, all of them right here, all my notes. Yeah. For, for, also... and, and we're doing it to a, a team in a Republican state. Is that correct? Yes. I, I, yes. In Missouri and Kansas, because Kansas City is basically on the state boundary. Um, that's exactly what's happening. That is the most reasonable. Listen, Layton, this show is about reasonable takes. This show is about the facts. That is the facts. Clearly the facts. Of, of I'm pretty sure situation. like weed and stuff is legal in Missouri. Did they pass that? It is. It's legal for recreational use. When I went to Oklahoma, you pass the border and you can just smell it. It's crazy. You know, I was driving home. So I think it's ready. I think maybe it is the prime candidate. And didn't Springfield, Missouri, wasn't that a big deal a bunch of years back? I know Springfield is the Simpsons, but that's, I think, Spring, Springfield, Oregon. I want to say. Yeah, like, there was um, there was a bunch of uh, racial tension in the country and a bunch of cities... Like in 2016, or racial something. racial tension in the Midwest. No, but no, there was. <laughs> but I'm pretty. F- wasn't Springfield, Missouri, one of those? There was another. There was a main one, but I'm pretty sure Springfield, Missouri, was also um, an impacted area. Anyway, anyway, doesn't matter too much. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not really sure what goes on with you know. There was going Chiefs on. fans didn't exist prior to 2019. The That's, NFL said. Is- that NFL is absolutely said, true. Let's make this market happen. I I have I have genuinely and I'll say this, there are genuinely people out there who who really think that. They think that the NFL is rigging it to build the Chiefs audience, but what whenever you bring up that a lot of Patriots fans jump ship when Brady went to Tampa, like they think that 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 audience is just going to stay like the value, like the Dallas Cowboys are the most world, like worldly recognized football team. Like they are, I would say around the world, the Dallas Cowboys are the most recognized of all the American football teams. Why haven't they won a Super Bowl since the nineties? Why? Cause they Patrick don't need Mahomes, to. Cause they're Patrick, trash. Pa- but can you imagine all the merch, all the merch they would sell? Patrick they already Mahomes. sell millions of dollars of merch each year by just existing and being dog water. <laughs> They would they would sell even more. I guarantee you, they would sell even more. Like they are when the Cowboys are really good, they that's just good for the NFL. Patrick Mahomes, who is arguably now the greatest quarterback of all time, like top three, he grew up in Texas. Wouldn't the story be fantastic if he grows up in Texas? He plays at Texas Tech. He played at Texas Tech, and then would be drafted to the Cowboys and wins a Super Bowl for the Cowboys. Why would he I go suppose. to Cam- What is the storyline to go to Kansas City? But then the Chiefs stay a poverty franchise with no fans. What about the Patriots? The Tom Brady grew up in San Francisco with one of the most storied franchises in the NFL. Just coming off Joe Montana and Steve Young. 
he then goes to Michigan with a team who has very loyal fans and has not won a Super Bowl ever. So why would you bring him to New England of all places? Like, <laughs> well, this wasn't was scripted. It's, it's just the Chiefs. Oh, it's just the Chiefs. Okay, they started that, scripting. They started scripting once he showed up. That makes sense. So your <laughs> team, because your team has lost the Chiefs multiple times, it only started with the Chiefs. The NFL well, didn't think about scripting it. Before. Thirty-one to nine. I don't remember the you know. So it wasn't scripted then. Was it scripted when you guys won? Well, they started scripting it afterwards. <laughs> or well, because see, Tom Brady played that Super Bowl, and he can beat the script. So his script. Wait, no, no. I think it's Tom I think Brady the beats script. the script. Tom Brady beats the script. <laughs> Tom, so Tom Brady is just more powerful than the script. Yes, that's, that's, that's what why. We're saying. That's why Tom Brady is completely the reasonable. It's not Patrick Mahomes. About facts. That is that is a fact. That is a clear just fact. Yeah, Tom I'm, Brady I'm beat the script. The script was Patrick Mahomes wins that game, but Tom Brady said, "Ain't no way I'm playing at you know 45 just to lose the Super Bowl to this you know little bum." Jamie clipped he's... that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Tom Brady beat the script. Um, <laughs> Thirty-one to nine. Leighton, Leighton, that might 31 be thirty-one to most, nine. Leighton, that might be the most reasonable non. <laughs> Non schizophrenic take I've ever heard. <laughs> yeah, the Bucks are just the best team to ever surface the NFL. Yeah, they they are just on <laughs> the script. The script is is like Tom Brady is immune to the script. I yeah. I say that Tom Brady was immune to like him being due. That's actually just him being immune to being you know to the script. Mm-hmm. Very reasonable take. Clapping yeah, up for script, Layton and the most reasonable the, take. The script was actually the, the Falcons dominate the the Patriots for their first Super Bowl win and Tom Brady's like, "Nah, I'm not going to let the script writers get away with that." And so then he let Wait, that come back. But but hold on. Was Tom Brady not powerful enough to beat the Eagles? The script was too powerful that year? No, that was Nick Foles. He was, no, he Nick was Foles, too powerful. Nick Foles. He Nick was Foles. too powerful. The spirit of Philadelphia was too powerful. I actually, the Eagles I think are the script, America's team. The script was actually for the Vikings that year to win the Super Bowl because that was the Minneapolis miracle year. But the script was for the Vikings. But then the Eagles and Nick Foles beat the Vikings in the NFC title game. So, yeah, Nick Foles actually was power, more powerful than Tom Brady, who's more powerful than the script. What's crazy is that if the Patriots had beat the backup quarterback Eagles, they would have had a three peat. Because then they win the year before and the year no, after. There, there hasn't, there hasn't been a repeat champion. I mean, before the Chiefs did it this year, there hasn't been a repeat champion since the early two thousands Patriots. Well, yeah, yeah, but didn't the Patriots win the Super Bowl prior to that and after? No, I thought they. Hold on, I gotta go back and rack my memory. It went Chiefs, Patriots against the Rams. Oh, maybe they would have gone back to back that year. Look at yeah. they would have gone back to back, but I thought it might have even been a three P. No, I mean, it wouldn't I'm have the year up. before that would have the year before that I think was Seahawks. No, no, no. Wasn't Seahawks okay, Patriots. It was it was. It was uh, yeah. Patriots beat Atlanta. With the comeback, next year they lose to Eagles, next and then the they next year they the beat the Rams. The year before that was Denver. Oh, so okay, so if they would have won, yeah, they went. To, they they went would have had a three P if they beat the Eagles in the middle. Okay, okay. So this, yeah, the script. The I don't, I don't even, I don't even know what the script <sighs> is doing because what about what about Peyton Manning in twenty fifteen? The Broncos winning was that the script because the Broncos beat the Patriots on their way to the Super Bowl that year. Well, yeah, Peyton Manning, he's like a legend, so he had to go out on a great season. So the script, so Tom Brady let him, he let the script beat him that year. Yeah, because game respects game. Tom Brady okay. knew he, Tom Brady was like, I'm going to be back here anyway over and over, so, so I'll, let, I'll let Peyton have this one. So then 2013, <laughs> when the Seahawks beat the Broncos, he did the same thing, and he was like, "I think, I think the script." Now, does Tom Brady know what the script is, or is he just 
he's just so good that it doesn't matter what the script says. He's going to win. He doesn't need to know what the script says. He does not know the script. Okay. Okay. So, so he just, so hold on. <laughs> he's just mega mind out there. So when he lost to Peyton or when, when they, he didn't win the Super Bowl in 2013, when the Broncos lot got their shit kicked in by the, mm-hmm. by the Seahawks, mm-hmm. that was Tom Brady also saying, I'm going to let Peyton have this one. No, he got beat fair and square. Eli, what about Eli and the Giants? The two Super Bowls they lost, Eli and the Giants. That's just Eli Manning is too powerful for Tom Brady. I would assume it is because Eli is Eli is the Brady beater. Yeah, Eli actually. Um, Eli is so Eli Manning is the most so powerful. It was being scripted. In the NFL it was universe. scripted for Eli to win that, and Tom Brady was trying to overcome the script. But Eli was overcoming Tom Brady's over. So, so it was really, you know, Tom Brady was having a so great day. Eli, Eli was having a perfect day type deal. Eli was coming over Tom Brady, basically. Mm, all over. All over him. He was coming <laughs> all over Tom Brady in those two Super Bowls. Okay, I, I think I have everything. I think I understand mm-hmm. everything. So before, wait, so if Tom Brady's so great, then I think he would have won a Super Bowl when he played for Michigan. Because he's just so powerful that the script would have written him in. Uh, well, yeah, but Michigan can't win a Super Bowl because it's a college football team. So, but I feel like if it was the script would. <laughs> Move, I'm I'm moving on. I can't do this anymore. <laughs> he's just, just built it, bro. I just it, it's it's just. It's just ridiculous. This is this is ridiculous. Yeah, the biggest the biggest script that I have a problem with is the possibility of Mike Evans going to the Chiefs, bro. He's not. I don't think he is. Well, even though the salary cap like, is increasing, doesn't look like the Bucks are trying to do anything to keep him. No, it's they crazy. they said now they said now that they are because the legal tampering period doesn't start until March 11th, so they can't actually have any discussion. I mean, they can. But <sighs> I think I think they're going to keep him. They better. Uh, what the awesome. fuck is that? Oh, NCAA 24, the video game, is releasing very soon. Um, I will most likely be purchasing an Xbox for this or a P- or a PlayStation because I don't have a gaming computer and I'm not dropping the money on that. But I can't not watch NCAA 24 and not buy it. Dang. You'll do it. Are you going to play? Yeah. I don't play sports video games, and what I do is just FIFA. Which is played... which is a sports video game. <laughs> I don't think this one is going to be the same as Madden. I think they're going to do a really. I hope they're going to do a really, really good job because this is actually. I think EA is making it, but I know ESPN if it's made is by the EA, game. then I expect it to be just the same football game that's come out the last ten years. Uh, who is? Let's see. Oh, it is EA, but I'm I'm very confident that they're going to do it differently. I am excited. I'm going to take USF to a national title. We're going to win 50 national titles in a row. That would be fun. Okay. That's it's, what I do on FIFA. I just take the worst team in England and take them to the bums. Bums are going to take Alabama. They're going to pick Alabama in franchise mode, and they're just going to be like, "Oh yeah, I'm going to win 50 fucking national titles. It's going to be easy." Like, shut the fuck up. You got to take Ball State, FIU, USF is one of them. You got to take, like, all these horrible pro- – I mean, honestly, I like completely the Florida agree. Gators. The Florida Gators are, like, kind of borderline at this point because they don't they, – they're kind of yeah, trash. Yeah, but they're, they're trash. They're, but they are still, like, a big program. Like, you – why – how is it enjoyable to take a big program and win a national Correct. title? That's insane to me. I agree. There's no that's challenge. Like playing, that's like playing Madden with the Chiefs right now. Like, if you're playing Madden with the Chiefs, like, unless it's, like, the franchise where you draft your own team and stuff, that's, you're boring. Like, you're just, mm-hmm. you're playing on easy mode. You need to start with the Bears or the Panthers. Again, unless you're doing the, like, the fantasy draft that they do, which was also really fun to do in, in Madden. But I think I got the Madden game, like, seven years in a row. My mom would buy it for me for Christmas, and I was like, "Ma, it's it's the same thing. Stop wasting your money, please. Mm-hmm. Just buy something else." So, I think we'll do one more spin, and then we'll be done. 
You spin me around, right round, baby, right round, going down, down, motherfucker, dude. Bruh, moments. Isabella, stop your yapping over there, bro. She is yapping. Okay, MLB uniforms. Baseball season is back. I went to a spring training game yesterday. Um, we will be increasing our baseball content as uh, as the year goes along. I think we're going to try and do some vlogs from uh, some spring training games with... Oh, my God, dude. What is... <laughs> what is bro yapping about? I'm going to the Rays game against the Blue Jays, I think, on March 29th. Is that... The, is that that's a regular season game? That yeah, I think it's the strike. first one. It is. Yeah, I'm definitely. I have been slacking the last couple of years in baseball because the Red Sox have sucked. But I am. I bought the M, the MLB package, so I'm gonna be able to watch all the games now, which is exciting. But uh, I want to get back into it. I haven't been in baseball as much as I really want to. Um, but the Major League Baseball uniforms. Are the worst thing on the planet. Nike, Why is that? Nike rolled out some new uniforms. Um, and they are just, I mean, they, they look like they were, like you ordered them from Alibaba. Like I'm not, <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Shop like, like a Timu, they're, they're literally Timu uniforms. You can, there are pictures, there are pictures of Shohei Otani modeling the uniform and you can see through his pants. Like you can see <laughs> the shirt, where the shirt ends. And we don't want down. that. I, listen, the, the only problem I have with it is they're wearing underwear. I can't have them wearing underwear in those photos. They, if they're going to, if they're going to wear those pants, they got to free ball it. Like you can't not free ball it wearing those pants. Look at that. Look at that cat. Let's, let's get a, let's get a cat inspection right here. Hold, hold her up a kitty. More. I don't want to hurt her, her arms too much. She'll be fine. Oh, that's, she's so, that's. She's so mad, bro. I'm I'm gonna give her. She's a little loud. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna rate that cat like a seven six out of ten. I'm giving her like yeah. I think I think seven six is fair. She's she's a little loud, but she is adorable. She well, she's just mad because I have the door closed. Okay. And that was oh oh. Are we gonna get oh, a nap? Yeah, the backside. <laughs> oh my god, dude. No. NSFW. Oh, oh, that's crazy, bro. What is wrong with you? Very loose with her body. That's you know what respect. She's loose with her body. She doesn't care. I'm the the rankings going up. I'm giving her a, an eight eight seven Dang. eight seven out of ten. She gets my daughter. Point. My daughter's already hoeing herself out online. <laughs> Layton, where have you been as a father? Where have you been as a father? To think that's acceptable. Just completely I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna have to put trigger warning on this episode for cat anus. Literally. I wonder if that could violate a guideline. I don't honestly I don't think you could really see anything. So I think it's alright. I mean like I when I saw the cameras, swear, bro. it was like it I was barely seeing anything. Um you know what? I could we could get Grizabella wearing those MOB pants. <laughs> <laughs> Those see through see through baseball fans. She she'd love that. Mm-hmm. Um the fans would love that. Anyways, uh <laughs> yeah, these uniforms they were they look like they were made in a cheap factory in China. I think if I go on DH gate right now, I could get a better quality uniform. I would say. I think that's like very reasonable. They are just the they literally they shrinkflation has hit the uniforms because the letters are like much smaller. They're it looks like when you order like, you know, when you go to a baseball game or a football game and they're giving out a free jersey, you know, mm-hmm. they like first thousand fans get a free jersey and it's like literally everything is just printed on. It's not embroidered. It's like yeah. low quality, but it's free. So whatever, whatever you expect. That's what they gave these players. That's basically mm-hmm. what they gave the players. There's a patch on the Mariners uniform that's it's like the Mariners logo on the side. And mm-hmm. this is like better quality. This is stitched and everything. Yeah, that is just screen printed on. It's just a screen printed logo. Thing. It's really. I mean, these are major league baseball players, but I'm not shocked because Fanatics is involved in it. They, they. I mean, it's really Nike's fault, but Fanatics is like the reason. I hate Fanatics. They're criminals. They're terrorists. I, public enemy number one right now. I would say, I would say that stupid fat groundhog is public enemy number one for me. Number two, 
Number two is Fanatics. Fanatics is number two. And then what, who's number three? Who would be public enemy number three right now? Um, the script? Would it be the script? The NFL script? Patrick Mahomes. I feel like... I feel like just Patrick Mahomes, though, you can't involve that. Fine. Travis I feel like it has, Kelsey. Well, Travis Kelsey, I think I think it's just the Chiefs. The Chiefs are pub- public enemy number three right now. Um, also, I think I mentioned this before, but Brittany Mahomes uh, appeared on SI Swimsuit as a rookie. Mm-hmm. Would. Absolutely would. I don't agree. <laughs> you don't agree? Did you see the photos? Yes, but just because I know, I don't know. Just, just everything oh, uh, about. I mean, the personality. Her, her personality. Although disgusting. I don't really. I was repulsed. repulsed. I don't like to make comments on people, <laughs> on people's like personalities because we don't really know them. But I, from what we've seen, I definitely would. I've seen enough. Get that repulsed. <laughs> <laughs> Although she did redeem herself, Jackson Mahomes tried to get into like it was after the Super Bowl, and he tried to get into like her little party at whatever club she was at, and a security guard denied her, and he tried to be like Brittany, Brittany, like come and get me, and she was just like nope, nope. So oh rare. wow, finally the family acknowledged that he's uh, uh, sexually assaults people. Rare Brittany Mahomes W. Yeah. Anyways, um, that's it. Thank you all for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, comment. We have an email list. Go and subscribe to the email list at chaoticallyintolerant.com. We send one email a week on Thursdays, and that's it. We're not spam. We're not bullshit. No autoplays if you open the email either. Um, But, uh, yeah, make sure to check us out, and we will see you next week. Or um, on Thursday, not next week. We'll see you on Thursday.